If you live in New York and wish to see the Leaning Tower of Pisa but are unable to, there's already a local substitute present, one seaport. From a distance, it seems like one of the regular skyscrapers that dot the New York City skyline. But up close, you'll find that the tower is incomplete and abandoned. Planned to be covered with glass from head to toe, the tower now sadly sits next to the East River, with few glass slabs sticking on its body. So what's stopping the project from going ahead? After all, it's a waterfront property located in one of the most premium destinations of New York, the Financial District. Its curse started when it was discovered that it had the same problem as the Millennium Tower in San Francisco. It's leaning. This 60-story building is leaning 3 inches or 8 centimeters towards the north. It may not sound like a big deal, as 3 inches is hardly a noticeable value in a project of this size. This tiny tilt, however, was big enough to bring an onslaught of legal trouble, cost overruns, delays, and media controversy. As of 2023, only half of the finishes, including windows, have been installed. For now, one seaport is waiting for its fate to be sealed as both the project's developer and contractor rip each other in court, with each party blaming the other for this multi-million dollar failure. This miserable situation is a far outcry from the time when the one seaport was announced in 2015. The media and public welcomed the idea of a first-ever glass tower overlooking the East River, built in the historic seaport district. Within a month of its topping out, potential buyers rushed to get their hands on the newly listed condos. So much so that by the end of the month, 72 out of 80 condos were already under a contract. The project's developer, Fortis, estimated that it would be able to sell 80 condos for a total of $272 million. To give its residents a true taste of luxury, there were facilities like a hydrotherapy spa, floor-to-ceiling windows, an infinity pool, and a fitness center. Seaport One even takes a step further, and three luxury yachts were made available on rent through their partnership with Hinkley Yachts. Essentially, residents would have yachts on call, but that amenity is no longer listed on the building's website. The cheapest unit consisting of a one-bedroom was listed for $1.2 million, while the expensive ones went up to $7 to $8 million each. Despite that, investors were still pretty excited. Swedish real estate broker and star of the million-dollar listing TV show, Frederick Eklund, were among the initial buyers. He secured a duplex on the 46th and 47th floor for a total of $4.6 million, a decision he would regret later. What exactly happened to a promising venture like this, and can this tower ever be redeemed? Stay with us till the end to find out. It all started in 2007 when Blue Rock Properties proposed a 52-story building at 161 Maiden Lane near the shore of the East River. In 2011, K Development bought the site for $41.17 million. The company had plans to develop a 40-story building containing 175 apartments. Fast forward two years, Fortis Property Group bought the site paying $64 million for the 11,500 square foot lot. Construction finally started in July 2015 on the tower then known as One Seaport Residences. They quickly had to change their name to One Seaport as a nearby tower with a similar name sued Fortis for trademark infringement. Once this affair was settled, the building's plan was approved by the New York Real Estate Finance Bureau in February 2016. Fortis hired the Italian firm Pizzarotti as a general contractor, likely in part because of Pizzarotti's low rates. People started coming in droves to invest in this fascinating new addition to the lower Manhattan skyline. Right after the condo sale was launched on April 19, 2016, within a single day, 20% of the units were in contract. At the time, Seaport One was supposed to open in early 2018. The glassy exterior of the tower was designed by Hill West Architects, reflecting the sky in the East River. The designer used four different types of glass to replicate the exact color of sunlight reflecting off the East River. Hill West also had to include some safety measures like creating a two-story lobby in case of a hurricane or some other natural disaster. Manhattan had already faced the brunt of Hurricane Sandy in 2012, and the South Street Seaport was one of the worst ravaged areas. Soon afterwards, city officials adopted new building codes requiring new developments to add more safety measures for emergencies. That's why all the building's mechanical systems are located at higher elevations in the tower to keep the building fully functional in another Sandy-type event. Each home is designed with a corner master bedroom and almost all include expansive harborside terraces, which offer cinematic views of the East River and the city skyline. The building's interiors are designed by Groves & Co. and features a one-of-a-kind light constellation with 375 hand-blown sculptural lights and a double-sided fireplace in the lobby. 
Each condo features hand-stained oak flooring and custom millwork to bestow the place a timeless elegance. Even though one seaport is surrounded by highways and hence the sound of traffics, the triple-paned floor-to-ceiling windows completely block any noise. It seems like an ideal home in New York, but this is where everything starts to go wrong. In early 2017, they received 10 safety citations from the New York City's Department of Buildings. The project's concrete subcontractor died after falling from the building's 29th floor. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office led an investigation into his death and found multiple building rules had been breached. 44-year-old Juan Chinillo was an Ecuadorian immigrant worker with five children. The saddest part is that he was supposed to have that day off but was called last minute to the worksite. Investigations revealed that the scaffolding platform holding Chinillo got stuck while being moved by a crane. After he released his harness to try and unjam the platform, the scaffold jolted, causing him to fall hundreds of feet below. It's against the building codes to move a platform while a worker is still standing on it. The project subcontractor, SSC Highrise, pleaded guilty to manslaughter and paid a $10,000 corporate fine, the maximum penalty under New York state law. Following the incident, the project was halted indefinitely, while two-thirds of the condos had already gone into contract. Afterwards, Seaport once saw numerous delays due to construction halting for various reasons. First, it was the improper installation of the construction netting. The second time, a concrete bucket hit the 34th floor, pouring concrete onto the street and lifting part of the 34-story deck. This incident was the final nail in the coffin of SSC High Rise, and they were swiftly fired and replaced. Despite all this chaos, the building topped out in September 2018 and 72 condos were under contract. It was at this point that the building's biggest deformity was revealed. Pizza Rodi sued Fortis in March 2019 over the fact that the building was leaning three inches to its north. And before you start to worry, no, it's not fallen. The structural integrity of this 670-foot skyscraper is intact, as revealed by tests done by two engineering firms. So how come this building's tilting while other taller structures in New York stay vertical? When engineers want to design a very tall structure, they need to take into consideration the weight of the building itself, furniture or equipment, and even wind load. If a heavy skyscraper is built directly above the land, it'll cause the building to sink in the soil over time and compromise its safety. Hence, the engineers came up with a brilliant solution for driving piles underneath the soil. Piles are vertical support elements, and in the case of a tower or a skyscraper, they're driven several feet below until it reaches the bedrock. As you can see in the picture, the topsoil is usually soft and not capable of holding a colossal building. The last layer, or the bedrock, is a solid rock that lies beneath the soil and loose material on the Earth's surface. It's important in construction, especially for family houses or multi-floor buildings. It doesn't expand or contract like the upper soil, securing the foundations of the building. Although piling is a reliable alternative, it's not necessarily cheap. The contractor accused Fortis of using a cheaper alternative of soil improvement. In this method, chemicals or other materials were added to the soil to strengthen it. Workers poured a concrete slab over the improved soil, and construction on the tower progressed. But in April 2018, a subcontractor discovered that the building hadn't settled on its foundation properly, and was displaying a bowing or curve in its verticality, or was leaning for short. In a 2019 lawsuit, Pizza Roti claimed that it had difficulties installing the glass curtain wall because of the building's lean, and that a continued lean would result in non-functioning windows, faulty elevators, and bad waterproofing. Fortis filed a countersuit blaming Pizza Roti for not properly surveying the construction site and for failing to ensure worker safety. While this war was being played out in court, Fortis hired a new contractor, Ray Builders, which replaced the Pizza Roti firm. The tower's lean made it tricky to install the glass interior, but Ray Builders somehow managed to do that. Still recovering from the turbulent work history, one seaport received yet another blow. Ray Builders stopped working on the project in July 2020, claiming that Fortis had failed to pay its workers and subsequently resigned as general contractor. Fortis, now in a panic mode, sued Bank Leumi for failing to distribute the $120 million loan. By then, one seaport had developed a bad reputation and expectedly all except six of the condo buyers had reneged on their contracts. At this point, Fortis was cash-strapped and was even sued by its own lawyers for not being paid. Any efforts for mediation between both parties have failed and one seaport remains indefinitely stalled. Can the lien be fixed? Not likely, since doing so would require digging up the foundation or other costly efforts. Take the Millennium Tower, for example. The project underwent soil modifications and retrofits that stopped the tower from tilting even further, but that didn't fix the actual 29-inch lien. The tower's residents are now forced to pay a $6.8 million repair bill. So it's safe to say that fixing one seaport won't be an economically feasible solution. 
What do you think? Can the tower be fixed and relaunched in the future? Give your take in the comments. That's all for today. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. We're committed to releasing two videos each week, so your support means a lot. And we'll see you in the next video.